Good morning, folks. It's Catherine and my anniversary. Give the video a thumbs up to thank her for everything she does behind the scenes, probably more than you know. We've got a significant space weather health warning ongoing, some cool news, cosmology, and a climate roundhouse kick to close. But we are starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day was mostly quiet. It's part of the ongoing issue. Bright active regions turning in will merit attention, but right now, the story is the quiet in the solar wind. From weak to very weak plasma streams, and we're watching a string of zeros on the KP index. Many confuse this for a good thing, no solar storms. But too quiet of a field lets in cosmic rays. And these energies are like water, oxygen, food, or any other number of things that you need in an equilibrium amount. Too much or too little of many things takes us out of balance. Sadly, the correlated events are where it gets scary. Per the alert from our app last night, we are at the highest cardiac and psychological risk. Ignore no symptom high-risk patients. And all persons are subject to emotional instability and cognitive decline. A good way to tell if you are already being affected by that today is seeing if your noodle reconciles this in about one second. Chapter 6 in our textbook, Weatherman's Guide to the Sun, has all the top studies on space weather and human health. We're moving on to the weather where in the Philippines they are about to get whacked. We have gone over Eta in the Gulf, but have largely neglected the smaller tropical systems in the West Pacific. But this is no puppy. Big dog charging the coast now. Fun stories start at Europa, where they believe its night side may glow due to the radiation environment near Jupiter. By doing more study, they think they can pick out signatures of life if they are there. Speaking of very faint glows, the first ever brown dwarf star found by radio has now been confirmed. And yes, this is the one located 212 light years away, nowhere near our system. Folks, where would researchers ever get a crazy idea like this? While the title does make you think of our 2013 Star Water series, which, among other things, proclaimed that all planets have water, these folks are actually not using the solar wind mechanism but the impactor and early bombardment scenario. To be honest, the mere idea of habitability exploding across the cosmos is far more important than how it happens, even though my way actually makes sense and is observed to work in situ at comets and asteroids, but hey, star water. Up next, we're into cosmology, and if you've seen our plasma cosmology movie, you know dust is one heck of a trickster. It's not only hiding, but its plasma trapping hides electric current, and today, we are taking a look at a couple of astronomers who dipped a toe into these dust uncertainties and came out asking just what is happening out there. It's fun to watch their dance at the link below. But on the real science side of these things, answering these problems, we find galactic magnetism amplifying at vastly earlier periods than expected. I'm not sure whose job it is to go back and rewrite the universe and galactic evolution and star formation with tremendously greater magnetic fields along the way, but thus far, every time something like this gets published, it gets ignored, so maybe nobody. Now, last but not least, the demand. We must stop being so short-sighted and use paleoclimate data and modeling and scenarios in order to better understand whether or not CO2 is what we think it is in the climate game. Um, they did that already. It was one of the top climate studies of the entire first half of 2020. Not that anyone remembered climate change in the first half of the year, but that's okay. We do. And if you take the results from back then, under the new light of the benefits seen in using such methods today, we can look back and weigh that one a bit heavier. Don't mind if I do. More about the sun filling in the missing pieces for CO2 and their uncertainties in our textbook. At spaceweathernews.com slash publications, you can get all the details about the textbook, including a free preview. Get it there or at otf.cells.com, where you can also pre-order our next book due early in 2021. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.15 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.